Right, so you got your water ready to go, Curtis. Episode 53? Uh, yeah, we're up to 53. So you got water, yep. we're all prepared. Yep. Is the camera fine? Looks good to me. Okay, Curtis, ready? You can start. Is it your intro? Three, yeah. Three, two, one, and welcome to another episode of Broken by Concept, episode 53. We are joined here with Nathan, special guest Nathan special. today. I'm so excited to be on the Broken by Concept yeah. podcast, everyone. I just would like to um, really just take this moment to just appreciate just having the opportunity to be on this podcast. Awesome. So, um, what'd you get up to on the weekend, Nathan? Um, Curtis, I've been just trying to play more solo queue. I'm back on my main account. Psycho came into my stream chat today mm -hmm. and he was excited that I'm back on my main because we talked about that last podcast. When did you play on your main last? Um, I played a three block on Saturday and played two games yesterday because I review on Saturday Sundays as well. Right. So um, you sort of like have a weekend, but I sort yeah. of like, you know, thing. I did some work with Will. Um, that's... So you took, a, you took a hiatus from your main for how long though? To learn Elise and Rek'Sai. Yep. I took a hiatus for two weeks and uh, it's it, it's weird what happened. I, I think I really got the hang of it and I think I went backwards for some reason. I think I started overcomplicating mm. my, my early games. And then, um, so then I, I, I had never actually recovered from that. Now I'm just fucking going back on my main. <laughs> I'm yep. having a crack. Having a crack, yep. And just reviewing my games and stuff, so. So what's your goal in terms of blocks on a weekend? How many, how many blocks are you trying to get in on a weekend? I want to play two, three game blocks a day. Every day on my main, six games a day at least. That'd be the goal if you can do that. That's yeah. a lot of, that's, what's that? It's 14 blocks a week. That's, that's a lot of games, dude. If you can get that in. What's that? 42, 41, something? I guess that is a lot, that's isn't a, it? That's a metric ton of games. Yeah, six times. If I did it every, every day, six times seven is 42 games. Yeah. No, I mean, it's average. I think it's not amazing, it's huge, but I think it's a decent amount, yeah. I, I mean, I, I probably won't be able to. We'll see how we go. I, I think I got three... I think I got three or four blocks on the weekend as well, mm. which was great. I'm, I'm starting to play on weekends now, get my grind on. So um, speaking of your solo queue, Curtis, we've got to address the yeah, top comment. We've got to talk about this. This is awesome. And and look... A top comment from my last episode, the, Curtis, would you say you got called out? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to be very transparent with my thought process when reading this comment. Um so we had a comment on our last episode from Jexter here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read it out. Just read it out. And then and then I'll talk through what my the way I interpreted this and okay. how it made me feel, okay? Yeah. So Jexter, 5 days ago Curtis set a huge goal of getting rank one challenger and since the start of the season has been full of excuses that I'm confident that he would call out in other players. It's a bit disappointing. That being said, it has been refreshing to see Nathan make huge clients by not making excuses and following the BBC mantra. There is a real contrast between their two views at this point and you can actually see it up in during the Tyler one discussion. Nathan knows what Curtis is going to say and is immediately disappointed. I'm assuming that's in reference to me saying that challenger wasn't impressive Something like a thing that's what he means. Also talking about, he's also referring to your uh, excuses in terms of you're not being rank one. No, but like, no, about the Tyler one specifically. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. He says that you're disappointed about something. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Was that about, were you disappointed? I don't think I was. I can't remember that. I don't, I don't think I, so I, either, I actually personally. I, did, I mean, if you were, I didn't get that vibe. No. Nah. Um, he says, I imagine that is because they always state that a player with a high amount of games and a low win rate is superior to a player with fewer games and higher win rate. Which we're going to touch on this whole Tyler one thing in a second, go very deep on this. But he said, and then he rounds it off with saying, I absolutely love this podcast and I have listened to it every, every single episode. However, the inconsistencies are thought to have jumped out of me given how candid Curtis is when calling out BS. Look at the reply as well. Oh, there's replies here. Yeah. Okay, so we had uh, Daniel, Daniel Panny. Um, I love the fact that a comment like this could actually be seen as a constructive in the section when in others it would have been as hate towards Curtis. I hope he actually sees this and reflects upon the matter and at the end of the day he is a human being and humans have forever been inconsistent and often unable to actually follow what they preach. Seneca is a classic example. Wish Curtis to reach his goal for the season or at least to continue to pursue it with the same constructive and self-reflective spirit that he kn we know he's capable of. And then Jackson replied again saying, absolutely, I wouldn't take t time to comment if I didn't have great respect for Curtis and Nathan. I wanted 
wanted to respectfully call out something that I was noticed in a recent cast. I also think you add some great points. It is often much harder to use the advice you would give to others. It also does show each of the struggles that both Nathan and Curtis have as well in their climbs. No one is perfect and would not and we would not be human. I do hope Curtis figures out what is actually keeping him from his goal, overcomes his challenges, and gets rank one. Brilliant. So, um, what was the first part you want to address on that one, Curtis? So, look, I'm going to walk through, first of all, my, my initial response was, mm. and then I reflect on this for a while. So, first things first, I was, um, imme- you know, when getting a comment like this, only you're only human you're obviously going to go into defense mode right mm. thinking all the all the all of the things why this person would be wrong and blah 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 blah. so i went into defense mode for about 10 minutes and i like i didn't really like I, and i actually started typing out a comment back really yeah oh my god and then was it like an angry you're like no, the kid, like Argh! no i wasn't really angry Jackstar. but it was but it wasn't coming from the right place got it and then I reflected on it some more and I had a chat to GIFs about it in my Discord. And um, I think it's awesome that I can get a, a, a... That we actually have people in the comment section that... Yeah, I think it's a great comment. And I think it's a really thoughtful comment. And I yeah. think it's it, it comes from a really good place. It's not like... I love sh- getting caught out for my inconsistency yeah. with the bullshit that I, that I preach. Right. And so what I would want to do here... Um, first of all, I want to clarify a few things just so we're on the same page. First of all, let's address the rank one goal. Okay? okay. Let's start with that. So I don't specifically recall when I set this rank goal. So I can't really comment. It would have been January or February when right. the season started. So my schedule uh, last year, um, even at the beginning of the year, before my Midland Academy, because my Midland Academy didn't start to the start of February, was very, very different to what my schedule is now. Um so I'm, I'm, I'm unsure if you're in the... I don't think you, you, you are, Jax. I'm assuming you're not in the Midland Academy. Um, but during the majority of the co- podcast, my schedule and even last season when I hit rank uh, top 10 was I was doing two blocks a day minimum. I was playing a metric ton of games. And that's what was one of the big reasons why I was able to, to, to I feel, as I perform to a pretty high level and actually overcome my mental blocks. During the start of the uh, Midland Academy, the, around the beginning of February... Um, I dropped off massively on the amount of games front. And um, look, and obviously, again, this is going to seem like an excuse saying, oh, here we go. You know, you're making another excuse as to why you you can't get rank one. But in saying that, um, I should have made it very clear to you guys on the podcast that my goal had shifted because I don't have the amount of games to get rank one. With and your my goal schedule. shifted just to maintain skill level, you would say? Um... Well, I'll get to that in a second. Okay. We'll, get, we'll come to that in a second. Um, my goal and my main focus has actually been building the Midland Academy for the last few months. My goal was to to get to a 500 members um, and over-deliver and optimize my Midland Academy. And majority of my time and energy is with my Midland Academy. Um, even... And you that's a lot of time and energy. It's a metric ton of time and energy. Mm. I, and I was barely even playing a block, not even playing a block a day. Some games I wasn't even playing at all. I was doing three, four blocks a week. So what's that? Nine games a week at that time. So I was barely playing the game. Um, and uh, this this had a big effect on my play. But more importantly, it did kind of make me realize that getting rank one with this schedule is not feasible. I mean, it just wasn't at the top of my priority. I wasn't even thinking about my solo queue, to be honest with you. I wasn't really thinking about my solo queue as a priority. Um, I was I was playing solo queue to get an update on the meta, things like that, but it wasn't really a priority. So first of all, I want to say that I think it's important that I have to realize that things that I say to Nathan off camera aren't on, you know, we don't capture everything and we have a lot of off camera conversations. So I think I should clarify a lot, especially these when we're talking about solo queue, I should clarify on the podcast itself what my goal is. To be honest with you, and I'm going to be brutally honest, I don't really have a goal right now i just want to perform well and and get better at the game and i I don't have an lp amount really like i'm climbing at the moment like i'm and to be honest this comment actually really motivated the hell out of me after this game i had i won nine in a row after that comment after this comment i won nine in a row oh my god we get need more of these comments then because i'm like well where's my comment someone because i just <laughs> and, and like and, and 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 so yeah i i'd never had a three o block yeah in the last few months yeah. and i had three of them in a row immediately after this comment 
my intensity was at a high, is a high, is at a high right now, and I'm super, and I'm playing way more games on weekends and stuff like that, and that's part of me wanting to get better at the game again. Um, so yeah, I'll be honest, I don't really have a goal in terms of what I want. I want to get um, better. Whether that gets me to top ten, that would be nice. But it's not something that really excites me. It's not like I want to set out and put all this time and energy and make sacrifices in other areas to get top ten. I'm not. I, I'm not going to do that. I'm saying that right now. I'm not going to do that because Midland Academy is my priority, and that is always going to come first. And then my solo queue will always come second. Um, so where I'm at right now, I'm. I think I'm hovering now just under one k LP. I was at nine hundred eighty eight LP, which is I think rank, around, around rank twenty. Um, I'm, I'm within shooting distance of top 10. That would be nice. Again, it's not it's not something that I'm overly excited about. It would be cool. But again, I, I'm, and I could get there, but I'm not going to make any sacrifices within my schedule. So I just wanted to clarify that. So hopefully that clarifies the whole rank one thing. And, um, and I'm assuming the reason why Nathan hasn't called me out is because he's kind of known... Your priorities. You've known my priority. Like you wouldn't have called me out. I'm not going for rank one, given that you know what I do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. So that's kind of why I'm assuming Nathan hasn't called me out on that, on on the the podcast. Now the next part of this was um. Uh, saying how it's with refreshing with Nathan because Nathan, you play a lot more solo queue than me. Um. Well, yeah. <laughs> if I'm playing on my what I have been on my Smurf, yeah, yeah, you've been playing. I play uh, like sixty games in a week. So, so, which is which is right, right? We want to play as much as possible, and that yeah. follows the whole grind BBC mantra. So, well, I uh, think, yeah, I'm yeah. assuming that's what he's meant talking about. Well, not making excuses and stuff like right. that. I think and right. having a growth mindset, and I'd say that uh, I guess the BBC mantra can mean right. a lot to uh, other people, but I mean, maybe we should write out our BBC yeah. mantra. Yeah. Because I don't really know what excuses outside of not going for rank one are. Uh, maybe I'm not self aware enough, but is what it is. And then, um, and then apparently we had a real contrast between our views around the Tyler one discussion. So again, sometimes when um, when we're sitting here on the couch, I I get confused whether or not we're talking on camera or not in a way. Like sometimes you just get into a zone and it'll just feel like me and you were talking because we talk before the podcast, we talk after the podcast, we just talk all the time and about random stuff. So I can't, sometimes I can't tell what we have said on camera and what we have said off camera. So, um, and also when we talk about specific we feel like we've got like a permanent broken by concept going yeah. right at all times. But, but also when we yeah. talk about stuff, yeah. we know what we mean when we mention a specific concept. Like I yeah. might say a sentence. Mm. And because that sentence, we're not very good communicators. Terrible. We're terrible communicators. We will say a generalized statement, but you know specifically what I mean. Mm. But from the audience, I'll say a generalized statement. Like, for example, we can use specifics here. Uh, I said, remember, uh, Tyler, one, getting low challenger is not that impressive. But you know exactly what my intention was behind that statement, but it wasn't clear. I actually had to clarify my Discord what I meant. So I want to take that as another opportunity to clarify what exactly why I brought that up, why I said it the way I did, and why you didn't, quote unquote, according to him, call bullshit, because, and why you didn't dis disagree, because you under you on we were on the same page. So, I guess it's like the same thing as like you know, let's say, um, for example, I'm reviewing someone. I said this is a bad gank, right? Yeah. And if it's a gold player, I need to go more specifically why it's a bad gank. And if it's a diamond player, it's like, well, we, I don't need to talk about it. Right, or if you've done multiple reviews with that person before, they That's know right. what they know what you're going to say and why you're saying it. Spot on. Um, so let's clarify, and I think this ties onto the Tyler One discussion very nicely. Is um, so last week we brought up Tyler One getting t challenger uh, with the top lane, mm. and I we might, bust out the info. And we're going to go deep here, and we've got to go very specific. But I remember my initial comment was, um, "It's not that impressive now." To clarify, what I exactly meant by that statement was it's not in, the way he got Challenger was not impressive enough to deem the way he did it vi like as a as a viable way to climb. So so let me clarify. If Tyler One were to get Challenger on a high Challenger or get low Challenger on like a, a, a very competitive server even the way he did it, that would mean something to me that um, there's something within his process that is 
that that maybe we're missing and that we would have to investigate and incorporate. Some of the comments were saying that they he they, they think they see him or he's talked about he does review off stream. Right. And he probably he does have a process, right? <laughs> but but the point wasn't to put Tyler One down, nor was it to make rank shame, nor was it to make anyone else feel bad for not getting challenger. It's given the circumstances, given the way he did it, and given the server and everything and the champions, but it's not impressive enough to deem it that I want to make it, use it as an example to kind of... A great example to climb. Yeah, a, a great others. example to climb. Right. I don't think he sets... It's not relatable. No, it's not relatable. So, oh my goodness. Uh, you would have to... Here. You'd have to... Um, I'll be right back one second. Plug the thing in, Curtis. You know, it's like the... Because it's like, yeah, if you push it in... Oh, there we go. Problem solved. I love the technical difficulties in the Broken My Concept podcast. Sorry, guys. It's like, remember when the thing came crashing down? <laughs> it was like a meme in my... Uh, what, what episode was that? Do you know what episode it is? It's a meme on my on my uh, Discord. With it's, like, why it's is like it always you? Why is it always your side? <laughs> no, no. It's never my side. It's just your side. Yeah, it's all chaos on my side. <laughs> um, so let's go deep on this because a lot of people... I had a few people in my Discord actually call say, Curtis, I, don't, I felt bad I, I didn't like the way you you Talk brought that up um i think there's more to it that you're not um you're, you're kind of this is showing weaknesses in your own philosophy of the game um all this stuff so i want to go deeper here and i think there's a lot to, to a lot to cover so there's an infographic nathan do you want to break down this infographic that was on reddit of Tyler so I, I searched up tyler one challenger infographic and there's a post four days ago on Reddit. Wait, so before this, we should actually say... So I think there's nothing left to say about that comment. Does that cover most of the comment? Yeah. Um, and and the whole low uh, win rate, high games played, we'll, we'll touch on that now. But for, before we go on, thank you, Jex. I really appreciate the comment. And I, I love this sort of thing. And yeah, it was a bit of a reality check. I think it made me realize I got to be careful with the way I say things. I got to be more transparent on the podcast and uh, make sure I'm not spreading the wrong message. So I, re I really appreciate that, Jex. Absolutely. So the top of this infographic about Thailand. So this guy came put this all together. Um, the first thing that sticks out is number of games played. So one thousand seven hundred and forty games played. Did he start this in the beginning of this year? I'm pretty sure that's all this season, isn't it? Yeah, in Feb from yeah, Feb February. So one thousand seven hundred seventeen hundred games in four or five months. Right? That is incredible. <clears throat> so. Um, Yep, so 1,559 of those games were top, and then the rest of it spread, so yep. you know, mostly so the majority top. of top, yep. And he played Shogath, Urgot, Aurelia. Um, those are his three top three main champs. Okay. Uh, Aurelia, he didn't do too hot on. So what was in win rate with Aurelia? 46%. So make sure the mic's close to you, Matt. So 46% with Aurelia, and then what were the other ones? I can barely even see this. J oh, I can open it with Reddit. Right. There you go. Oh, here we go. Um, gotcha. Yeah, so we had a 55% with Chogath, 53% yep. with Urgot. Yep. Um, so this is just in order of uh, champ, uh, most number played. most played. Yep. And then three is Aurelia with a 46% win rate. Yep. Then Aatrox, 52%. Then Quinn, 57%. Yep. 140 games played. Heimerdinger at the top, 52%. Mordekaiser, 49 And then, I wait, that's oh, Ivan Jungle. He offered right. Jungle. Yeah. So there you go. Those are his champs he's played. Quinn surprises me. That's, yeah, it's a good... That's a pretty hard champ to it's play. It's pretty hard. I mean, yeah, it's a decent counter pick, good little niche pick. Maybe he played that, I think, I think in the when he was climbing, maybe in lower elo, I think. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Don't know. So, so yeah, shit ton of games. Um, uh, most wins in a day, 14. Most losses in a day, 18. Holy moly. Imagine <laughs> to lose in 18 games in, in a, one a day. How day. Much, how much LP is that? That's net. That's, that's like... Uh, it's like a whole... It's more than... It's like 200 a, nearly LP. two divisions. Holy shit. Uh, most tribute. games played in a day, 25 games. In th he did three games, three, day, three days in his journey. So, so we've got to lay the groundwork here with Tyler 1, okay? Now, there's a, the, the first thing we've got to identify is the situation in which he is climbing in, right? His, his real-life scenario. <clears throat> so what do we know about Tyler 1? He makes a shit ton of money. He's famous as hell. Attractive girlfriend. Plays league for a living. This is his job. This is his livelihood. And he takes gym seriously. Gym, gym seriously. His Healthy, fitness. competitor, yeah. dude. Yeah. So a few things are very important here. There is no stress in his mind about, you know, having to worry about a real life job. 
It's not like he... he this ha- is his job. This is his job and his livelihood. Mm. It's not like he has a time frame in which he's, you know, he's a pro player. He's got to achieve X amount of results in a certain amount of time. Otherwise, he's wasting time. A lot of people have mental baggage thinking, you know, my parents are on my ass. Whether it's I've got to go to uni, study at uni. Whether I've got to work a job. Whether my girlfriend hates me playing the game. The other thing, his girlfriend probably, compl- I mean, obviously plays games, but loves i'm assuming i don't want to assume too much here but i'm assuming completely understands why tyler one has to play so many games given it's his livelihood and that is his identity Mm. and um so the situation which he's climbing within is is already we're one in a one in millions 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 of people well the the biggest problem with this is that i feel like that the way he climbed the spam in the 1800 games is unrelatable to a lot of people because of those key factors that you those key talk factors about. yeah the biggest thing is tyler one i don't believe he gains his he, he doesn't need confidence from his level of playing league of legends he just he's he talks he's addicted it, well, to the he's game. already an alpha male in a way right like, yeah well he's already like he has confidence in other areas of his life so he's made he makes a shit ton of money he's got a great relationship a long-term relationship he's healthy as strong as hell G- gym like ripped like he 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 ticks all the boxes to gain confidence in real life anyway. He mm. doesn't he doesn't use league as an escape. By the looks of it, again, I don't want to psychoanalyze him, but it doesn't look like he uses the game as an escape. He has a a, a somewhat healthy relationship with the game in a weird in a in a kind of in a messed up sense, like yeah. in the sense that it is his livelihood and he's doing it for a good reason. He's not he's not. Um, I mean, he still works out all the time as well, and he has a health. It looks like he has a pretty healthy relationship. He's not foregoing real life stuff for the game, um, by the looks of it. So if all these factors play a massive part in one's ability to spam games. Now, compare this with the average solo queue player, a twenty-one year old university student, or um, someone looking for a job, or even a, a someone who does work a full time job. You just don't have the 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 same. The context behind, if you're spamming games and you're in one of those situations, you're in a completely different headspace. So he's already at a huge advantage. This is one of one of the many reasons as to why he could successfully spam games and get results and and, and not fall off the tilt off the face of the planet. Because mm. again, he doesn't have all these things in the background. Now, I think there is something huge to do with him also being an athlete and him having that experience getting strong at the gym. He knows how to get good at something. He knows the process. He knows the process. He knows that if he does it enough and if he sticks to the process and, you know, he puts in the hard work, eventually he's going to get somewhere. Um, If he's able to maintain that intensity, you know, in a way. And he does in in a kind of a messed up way. He kind of does have intensity. Not with all of these games, but he does in a way because he does, he's a competitor. He does want to win. Right? Um... So again, these are all very unique to his situation, incredibly unique to his situation. I mean, think about how many people write into us say that they their confidence is tied to their league performance or their rank, right? Unbelievable amount. Again, Tyler doesn't have that no. because I mean, you know, you could. Just I have not. Look I at have your not account. met a single high elo player that doesn't have that. There you go. Because being good at League of Legends requires inherent sacrifice like being that good at league of legends requires an inherent sacrifice that you've made in other areas of your life whether you've you've sacrificed your studies whether you've sacrificed time at the gym whether you've sacrificed your friendship circles to get that good at league of legends the all the pro players they didn't really have social lives no you'd have to be absolutely yeah most most of the players are, use league as league an escape is their confidence. and they it's had the cornerstone. they randomly happen to get good out of them Tyler one player. is, a, is a, a, a one and again a one in a million one in a billion one man. in a billion <laughs> yeah right so there's that again these are the variables that we need to consider here now going the next level deeper he did review some games apparently he reviewed off stream and he didn't want to apparently it seems like he didn't want to bore people with stuff that wasn't entertaining so he did some form of review in, in a few of his games um, but I think that we should also note that um, it seems like there was a bunch of ease of execution in terms of champion pool. His main champs that he climbed with. Mm. Quinn, in my opinion, I mean, it wasn't his most played, but Cho'Gath, Urgot, very easy to execute, clear identity, great champions to spam. Um, even if you get behind, I was looking at some of his games he was winning. He was getting down 100 CS, but still winning because he was just getting his TPing bot, getting his AD carry fed. He understood how to get certain people ahead on his team. Um, he understood how to win a game of League of Legends because he probably played. He's played so many a metric ton of games. So that way, it's not like he tried to play Aurelia, Fiora, Camille, 
um, you know, all the carry tops. I mean, he, he had a 46 percent win rate on, on Aurelia. And then outside of that, Heimerdinger, you know, Lane Kingdom, <laughs> Quinn, I guess, you just push and move um, Rome. So, like, he had an easy-to-execute champion pool, which I think was smart. Um, what else is with this one? Um, the, the, okay, so going a bit deeper, again, the biggest reason I, I, I'm so defensive about why this won't work for the, again, 99% of players um, is because we know that they don't have time. It's not feasible for them to play that many games either. So in a way, he's kind of all in on this one style of throwing off shit at a wall and eventually it will stick. But if that if you're going to go down that rabbit hole, you got to commit hardcore. Mm. So the, in, in my mind, the, there is no middle ground in a way. There's no like half-ass spam games and half-ass intensity. You are either one or the other. You either play the metric ton of games like Tyler One has done with complete free flow presence and just kind of do get in like his own messed up process, or there is the low amount of games and making up for the less amount of games with higher intensity, playing six games instead of 15 games or nine games instead of 18 games, but you're getting twice the amount of value from each and every single one of those games. So I actually had a guy um, say specifically, um, I want to play the as most amount of games as possible in a day. He has mm. a metric ton of time. Mm. And mm. I actually, I got specific. Okay, let's get specific about if you were to spend as much time as Tyler One plays a game, how we could better utilize this time. And, and, and this is my argument. This is the crux of my argument. If Tyler One had a more structured approach, say he wanted to play, he wanted to dedicate a 24 hour period of the day to getting better at League of Legends. Let's structure this out and compare how many games he would play, vice versa. So you said some games he's playing between what? 15 to 25 games a day. Something like that. And he's probably playing... He's not even playing in blocks at all. He's just playing as many as he can, yeah. eating at the desk, queuing up, playing yeah. as many as he possibly can. Yeah. Now, let's compare this with blocks of th three, four, right? You could probably play in blocks of four if you're high intensity, you had good sleep, you had good exercise, and you eat, eat well. So let's say you played in blocks of four, um, and, and one of them would probably have to be short in order to play a block of four. So you could theoretically play 12 games if you did three blocks of, th three blocks of four a day. Okay, so that's four, four, four. You would wake up, um, breakfast, whatever you want to do, four games, workout, lunch, another four, brief break, another four, reflect, whatever you want to do, and then um, sleep. You could do that, and that's 12 games. So if we can compare these 12 games of high-intensity focus reviews in between versus the potential 20 games, that's eight games different there. Eight games different on average if you were to spam. Then you've got to ask yourself, okay, what do these eight games look like? Specifically, what are you learning in these eight games? Let's get let's get specific here. Are we learning, are we trying to develop champion mastery? Are we are we learning about jungle tracking more? Are we trying to build our side lane awareness? What is it? And what you'll find is that um Yes, there probably is little things that you could get better by just playing mindlessly and having low intensity. You could probably get better knowledge about intuitive stuff like trading patterns in, in a weird way, maybe skirmishing intuitively, understanding the meta a little bit better. I'm not saying you learn nothing. If you, if you As long as you're still competitive somewhat, you're probably going to get a little bit. But well, let's compare that then. Okay. Any hardcore skill... Um, whether it's developing uh, the more complex stuff, whether it's side lane awareness, actively using your lull states, thinking about making high like high value calls, whether it's trading off objectives, looking for creative TP roams, um, creative like uh, lane ganks, and then TPing back top, wh whatever it is. You just you, first of all, even if you made one of them, it's on autopilot, so you don't know how to replicate it. And if you don't do it, you, it's not like you're going to go in the review and look at missed opportunities. So you don't even know if you could have done it. So developing these more intensive skills, it just doesn't happen. Which shows, that's why it, I mean, and that's why. That's why there's people that uh, have 1800 games in gold or that, silver. Yep. 2000 games in these. these well, elos. that's why we're also seeing 1800 games in low challenger. With the most basic champions. So, um, my argument is that playing those th three blocks of four 
would fu- it would be far superior. And I've never seen it. This is the interesting thing as well. Think about the players in Die Wolves that got the most value from the boot camps that could actually implement their learnings on stage. They didn't just spam. The, the most effective boot camps we had were the ones where people actually, like we actually did things in between the day and we split up the days. The people, in my opinion, that got the most value from the boot camps, Cupcake and Steven got insane value from the boot camps when we, when we went to Korea. And they, they genuinely leveled up and enjoyed them. They didn't mindlessly spam games, both of them. Okay. I wasn't there for most of that right. camp, so I don't know. So I I'm comment. just thinking from just sheer experience. Yeah. <clears throat> even even if you think about in general, um, Shern and stuff, they started to stop spamming as many games because they realized that they'd done that before. You know, it can work to a certain extent, but they started to play less games in a way. Shern fire over time, who was notoriously the biggest grinder. Yeah. So the players who had done it had realized mm. that, that that way just wasn't as wasn't as viable. So, I mean, then, then okay, this ties in, and sorry if I'm taking too much on this, Nathan, but then <laughs> feel free to jump in. I'm so passionate about this. Th- and then I always get asked, but how come all the Korean pros and Chinese pros yeah, spam all these games? One, isn't it? Now, I got, a, I got a perfect counter-argument to this. Okay. The games are so different. They can play games of six because the games are 15 minutes. And they get insecure. They get insecure pops. So you are actually in my. If you were to measure, okay, we have a hundred energy, hundred mental energy, right? In NA or any mm. of these other regions, or whatever it is, you don't have. If you have a hundred energy, if you were to put that into how many games we can play with max intensity or very high intensity, it's three, four, ma- like like max. But in Korea, insta pops, you're getting. The games are so quick. They're, they're over so quick that you can get done. Boom, boom, boom. You can play five, six, seven games in a block that would have uh, uh, according, like been three or four equivalent of three or four in another region. And trust me, you will see this when you actually <clears throat> do play in Korea. When mm. we never do that, you're going to see it. Mm. The games are, are, are so... And, you, and that's the thing. You remember, think about this as well. The, 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 when... Our team at Oos did the same amount of time solo queuing in a day on a weekend. They could probably play max 12 games. That's if you're playing all day because the queue times, the games are longer, no one FFs. In, in Korea, they FF instantly or they were AFK, the open, that sort of thing. You, if in, They were getting 25 game days in. Third, like ridiculous. Yeah, you could get... You, you could get, get like 30 games in a day a if normal, you wanted to. Yeah. 25 to 30 games a day mm. if you really wanted to. Mm. So the games are much shorter. But they're playing the same amount of time, so it's it's not about games played. It's about the it's about the time period, because it's it's more like mental energy, right? So I that I think that's the biggest thing, and and no one talks about this. But the games, look at NA, no one FFs, and the games are much longer. Mm. Yeah, I'd say that the three block thing is is, is maybe it's even more. Uh, it, it's more like our approach to O solo queue as well, high elo, because you just have to do it. You really do. I think EU could you could probably yeah, get more. you can get it. You, you can could get probably more. get four yeah. or five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, the just the shorter queue times and everything. Yeah, that's the way you more think of it. It's terms of like energy it's, it's, focus. It's, it's energy and focus in that period of time. Because at the end of the day, a three game block for us takes shit. It takes a long, long time. time. Two, like and two and a half hours, hours sometimes. sometimes yeah. 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 So I think. Look, don't take it by Bible three. Look, I still think majority of people with three blocks is great. But for the high, if you're going pro, you still need to be playing bulk amount of games. You do, yeah. Right? Um, well, I guess our approach and, w- and why we're against what Tyler One did. So to sum it up is his approach is unrealistic based on his life situation. His circumstances. His circumstances, his mindset, his approach to his the game. His mindset and approach to the game is, is completely unique and different. We've seen from our clients how destructive spamming games can be and what happens when and you tie And spreading the wrong message. Because if someone will copy this, they can fo- they will quit the game. They, yeah. they will literally just quit the game. Yeah. I mean, he, he would have done that challenge for, for if he never got challenged. Yeah. He would keep going for 12 months. That, and that's my point. Yeah, he would have just done do it. That. Yeah. He would have just kept going because he's already gotten confidence that he's gotten challenger on AD Carry because he's a, a you know, challenger AD Carry player. He's already gotten confidence. He doesn't need to get top lane challenger. It's just like a bonus. Mm. So he's going to do it all season anyway. He's not mm. going to give up. Mm. And that's his mentality, right? Yeah, never, that's <laughs> a benefit. He's never give up, right? Yeah. But, but um, the other thing as well we got to remember is like he... He's incentivized to just spam games as well. Like he gets paid for it, right? 
There's nothing else he could be doing with his time anyway. And that's the question. It's like, that's what we find. He's like, when people like to say they drop out of, of soul to a mid lane account, well, I don't know what it is for you, but uh, you know, sometimes I ask, you know, why it's like, you know, I like, I just could be doing better things like moving on real life stuff. Right. It's like, you know, that's just the reality. Yeah, it's you know? reality. Like, I've had not a few everyone's of them. trying to be a pro player and not yep. everyone's, you know, spot on. And, and I think, so if you have limited time and you want to have a healthy relationship with the game, that's why our message, that's why we're anti the Tyler one message. We're more three blocks, focus on learning, create some structure around it. The end of the day is trying to get, how do I get more learning from a game, from one game than Tyler one's four games? Okay. That's like the problem now, now as well, Nathan, would you say if, if Tyler one followed the process, our process, how many games would it have taken for Tyler one to get the same result? So he did it in 1,700, 1,800 games, whatever That's a good question. How many games do you think it would have taken? Well, if you think about, uh, for me, right, I, this is the process that I did, right? So mm-hmm. last season, uh, I think I had a lot of games. I think I had like 1,200 games yeah, or something like that, thing. right? And that was not doing a three block. And I was stuck in diamond. And like, yep. I finished like master tier, right? Zero LP in that season. And then this season, so so you can even say, you can't even say it's like, well, like I was a challenger player. So like I randomly just got it by following this process. So I wasn't until this season, right? And then this season, um, I did that three block process. I played, I think I hit challenger after like 300 games or maybe 250 or something like that or, or 270. Um, actually, I think it would be more than that. I think it would be like 400 games. So about 400 games following the three block process, but not being a challenger player before. So that's in your experience. That's the, well, that's, that's just what it is. So 400 but that was your game. role set. We've got to keep in mind that he's going from 80 carry to that's top. That's true, yeah. So so taking that into account, your experiences, I think if Tylenol took it very seriously and... But remember, my situation as well is like I'm full-time thinking. I'm not playing, but I'm thinking about the game as well, I guess. Right. Because I'm reviewing and all that sort of like stuff. Like that's all you're focused on. Yeah. Right. Look, I'm confident that he could do it in, in basically half. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's, it's, a, it's a good, good basically estimate. half yeah. eight hundred nine hundred games. Yeah, so that's like double st- mine. Yeah, I would say give or take. Yeah, yeah, basically half. Um, and again, we're we're never going to know because he's not going to do that. But that's that's our theory. That's my. Th- I mean, that's that's our theory. That's what what's what, what's worked for us. And um, worked for us and our clients as well. Yeah, and our clients as well, not just yeah. us. Spot on. So um. Hopefully this clarifies a lot of these points because I'm, you know, I think he's spreading, you know, and he's not, again, we said he's not intentionally spreading a message. He's just doing him, but he just happens to be a huge influence on a lot of people. Mm. And, and just to clarify one last time, the whole now, you know, it's not that impressive. You know, when I was saying that it's again, I'm nothing against Tyler one. He's doing some cool shit. I love Tyler one. He's funny as hell. And I'm not rank shaming nothing. The intention was to basically my intention again to clarify was okay cool you did this but the way you did it and given it's low challenger on na um it's not impressive enough to justify the means period for the average person for the average for the no, no for i'm not even saying the average okay, majority majority okay. for the majority yes. of players yeah and and if there's players out there that love spamming and they're getting a lot of success with it do it you do you you know if, the, if it's working for you, go for it. I'm sure there's some players out there that 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 spam and, and are getting great results. Go for it. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, if you're not, though, this is there's probably a huge reason why. Yeah. Is there anything else to add on to that, Nathan, you reckon? No, I think we covered it nicely. Okay. Um, while we're on the topic of solo queue... You made a tweet, Curtis. I made a tweet recently. So talk, go switching from top lane to mid lane. Yeah, go on and talk about mid lane a bit. Look, uh, like I really don't like talking about meta. I made this clear, and um, and I tried to hold. I look, I was in denial. I'll be honest with you. I was in denial about the meta mm. when Viego was starting to get played mid. Mm. When I started to see Lee Sin, I said all the gimmicks. Is what I said. No, <laughs> I said, said Tristana mid as well. Yes, well, Tristana is not even really that played that often, but yeah, okay. it's stronger than I thought. Um. But specifically, Viego and Tristana, I mean, so Viego and Lee Sin and all these champs, I was thinking to myself, look, this is a gimmick. Don't worry about it. You know, it's probably going to be a patch and they'll get nerfed and it'll be done. Um, over time, you know, things like Silas as well. I'm like, is this going to get nerfed? The meta's just going to shift. It's been, what, a month, more, two months? Two months, yeah. And it has not changed. 
And um, look, I, I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off at the way this. I'm I'm pissed off with what Riot have allowed the game to 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 end up the state it's in for the mid lane position. Well, uh, I think in general, but the mid lane so is your a tweet example. specifically was you're not happy with mid lane. Yeah, I think the mid lane meta is the worst it's ever been, and a lot of people agree in, with in you. past se- eleven seasons. Mm. Did say in the past eleven seasons, my, minus the minus the the, the, the do meta, you like Corky as yeah? I'll get to that in a second, but but minus the the time where we were in the uh, meta where it was um that that bullshit funnel. Okay, like yeah. minus that meta, yeah. minus the the funnel meta. This yeah. is the worst mid lane meta there is ever been mm. and i want to elaborate because i actually someone on the discord asked me because what what do you what is the optimal meta then what does an optimal meta look like okay so right now the meta to clarify you cannot or it would this is specifically talk about high yellow for now in high yellow games you cannot effectively climb with majors uh you look at any of the top 10 players top 20 top any of the top solo queue players in every server there is very little mage players, if if any. They all play Viego, Silas, Lee Sin, um, basically any melee mid. And the meta is Viego, Lee Sin, Silas. And then we also see Rumble, we see Galio occasionally, we see Gwen mid, we see um, Zed, Kian. Every melee, Akali was coming back. You know, all these champions um, are great and they work well in solo queue, Nocturne mid. And if you try to play anything that is either immobile or mana dependent, you either get um, destroyed by champions that out sustain you, whether a Silas just W's you occasionally and heals back up, a Viego just uses his passive to sustain, or whether someone takes fleet and D shield and resolve secondary and you're never going to poke them out, um, you kind of just lose. The game is over before you're impactful. Now, yes. In some of the weaker regions like Oceania, you can get away with majors a lot more. But in in the major reasons, it's it's basically unplayable. And and I'm not even exaggerating with that with that. It's really, I've had I had a game for example the other day. I was playing versus Rise, and you I was playing, playing I was playing uh, Rumble. Any champion that are any mage, the situation I'm in, I'm out of the game. I was zero two, half CS, no flash. And Rice had like a completed Everfrost when I had, I think I had a Sorks and like a, uh, like two Amtoons or something. I was like beyond out of the game. And then, but Rice can't do shit. He can't operate because you just die. You just die because you're low range, you're immobile, you, you know, you just literally die. You're too low, you can't do shit. So I'm playing Rumble. I just sit there, throw my ult down. I, I can just skirmish too well. It doesn't matter. So the majors aren't impactful. Even when they get a lead, it's hard for them to take over the game. Um, and I think this is a combination of the following. Mage items are weaker than the, the, like quite weak comparatively to all the other assassin items. I wouldn't even say assassin items are strong. I think AP, made, AP items are just weak. Um, the, I think with what the do you whole, think of Aerofrost, by the way? I think Everfrost is... The only reason it's good it is... It gets built all the time. Yeah, it's the only one. It's the it's the best mythic for ma- mages because it gives you HP and um, CC is good versus the meta in Got general, it. like an additional CC appeal. You yeah, know? Um, that's why most mages build it as well. So annoying to me. It is. It is annoying, especially when Silas builds it. Oh, yeah, man. it's pretty good. Um, so there's that, and yeah. then also um, the amount of sustain and healing in the game is fucked the game, which we'll get to in a second. I think it's ruined the game compl- in every other role as well. Yeah. And um, there's too much threat and mobility. Too much threat and mobility. Common it's from both items with Prowler's Claw and Gale Force and things like that, as well as just the meta, um, the way the game has evolved. So um, that's where the game is right now. So I made a tweet saying I don't. I think it's in such such a sad sad state. Why is it that all of the champions that were developed for mid lane and the game is based around you can't play them? You can't play Syndra. You can't play Azir. You barely play Victor. Oriana's basically unplayable. You know, all these champions are just done. Any mage. So, um, now you may ask, okay, what's the most healthy meta? What does a healthy meta look like then? Okay, and this ties into jungle perfectly here. Mm. I'd love to get your take on this. Mm. A healthy meta is one where the ma- mages dictate the, the average game. But then, because mages are in the meta, situational picks come about. 
So you have the crux of the mid lane meta is should always be you know there's a Syndra, 60, Victor, 70 percent of the time. Yeah, Syndra, Victor, Oriana. You have the occasional Azir, Corky, whatever it is. But then with these champions in the meta, you know what happens? There's the niche Zerath counterpicks to immobile mages. Zillions come into play randomly. Then to counter these ones, you have Zeds come in. Silas niche counter niche counter picks. Yep. Kiana niche two v two picks. Yeah. Galio can come in, in in a healthy state. Certain champions can come in situationally, right? That these champions should all be situational. You should not be able to blind pick Silas mid. What the fuck is that? How can you blind pick Silas mid? A melee mid. A melee mid. It's pretty crazy, isn't it's it? It's unbelievable. Yeah. You can buy big Viego mid. Yeah. And you can't do anything. Wow. You can buy big Rumble mid and you can't do shit. Wow. He just goes Dorans and you just secondary resolve. You can't kill him. You got Oom. He just one shots the wave. He runs. If you're a mage against If you're that. a mage. Yeah. If you're a mage versus a run. And that's why the meta, you know, that's why the meta, by the way, came via. So Viego counters every melee. And Gwen also does well into melees. Yes. So what happens to counter champions like um, Silas, yeah. Viego counters Silas. Yeah. Right? Mm. And then Lee Sin, I'm assuming, is... And then Viego's pretty good into Lee Sin, Aatrox, I think. Aatrox, I played with the Aatrox mid against Silas. I haven't yesterday. seen any Aatrox mid. But, okay. but th that's all. That's how that works. So, like, they, the melee mids, Viego and things come in because they beat the mm. uh, the um, mm. the other melee mids. Mm. So, it's like a melee versus melee mid. Then we're seeing, like, Renekton mid come back in. And we're probably going to see set mid. It's all this bullshit <laughs> because you can't play a mage, right? So... um. That is how I think it operates. Because then you have the, the opportunity to go a, a niche Z comp or a niche um, Akali game. You can go a niche Galio game, a niche Zillion game, a Zereth game. You can have really interesting mid-jungle 2v2s. Now, be, given that the mid meta is like it is, you can't play any scaling jungler because you just get invaded 24-7 and the game pace is so fast, you, it's just end of review at like... Five minutes because you can't play the game. Yeah, you can't afford to play Sejuani or a, no, a Jar. Tanks are really difficult. Yeah, you can't play a tank. You just lose off first clear. And then you say, "Well, like Nathan Udia and Tekra and that meta with that they weren't. They're not tanks. That, they, they could do stuff. Udia is the, early the game. strongest early and in champ of the game. Yeah, he's very strong. Yeah. So what happens when you have a combination of 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 ma uh, majors yeah. plus niche picks? Yes, there's going to be the odd Xin Zhao, Elise, Rexai game. But then there's going to be the crux of, oh, interesting. We need a bit of utility. We have the odd Sejuani, Jarvan, whatever game. And then the odd Nidalee game. Just depends on... There's a lot more flexibility with the way the jungle works. And AP junglers are Carthus so important. Carthus comes into play occasionally and Evelyn will come into play occasionally. Yeah. But it's all niche and specific for a comp. Yeah. You don't just blind pick, you know... Again, you can literally blind pick um, Elise, Kiana, mid jungle, and it's you can't do anything. Doesn't matter. Um, you know, it's just, it's just stupid. And, and I don't, I don't, I don't like a world in which you can blind pick a, me a melee and then your response is, okay, I want to pick something that can bully this guy. And you can't do that. Cause there's so much sustain. Yeah. The sustain between fleet full works and, and, and everything and the, the threat, the damage. Yeah. Cause you got, and seekers got nerfed. So seekers is useless. If you buy seekers, you're useless. So yeah. and this is, and this is the more, this is the thing that fucks the game the most actually. This is what happens. You're a mage that you need mana to be able to constantly harass. So you need a tier, right? Because mm. if you don't build tier, you're not going to be able to get through the, the sustain of a Doran shield or a fleet. Mm. Otherwise, it's the end of review. You have no mana versus one of those champions. You do nothing. Or to get through the scrap shield of the of the, of the, 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 the the rumble or the W of the Galio or the bone plating and resolve secondary, right? Then if you buy a tier and you're versing a lethality champion, well, what the hell do you do? Do I beat a Seekers? Then I have a tier and a Seekers. But then I have a tier and a Seekers and I'm on two shitty components and Seekers <laughs> does nothing anyway anymore because I nerfed it. Yeah. So then they're on, a, they're on like their first core item by the time I have a variety bucket of a tier, a Dark Seal, <laughs> a Seekers and a tier two boots. End of review. Yeah, you're useless, aren't you're you? You're just useless. Yeah. So then if I build full damage, then I'm just, I'm just like, I have, to, I have to play like Faker when this guy can just like Prowler's Claw one-shot me. <laughs> I have to make perfect tethering like Faker to make one mistake at the end of the game. What's the point? So the problem is there's too much sustain. The threat and sustain. The yeah. threat and sustain combined yeah. with the lack, with how high Syndra throws three Qs on the wave and you're... <laughs> really? Is that why it's so bad? Syndra is literally like... 
okay, if the Riot developers played the game, just please tell me. Like, I would love to watch a Riot developer play the game. That's yeah. what I would be, I would love to see it. Okay. Like some dude at the Riot office, like a developer who's like, they're coding the game and shit and they like think they're, you know, they've really done a great job. And then I'd play Syndra. I want you to play Syndra versus Zed here. I want you to play Syndra versus Galio. I want you to play Syndra versus Rumble. I want you to play Syndra versus any meta mid. Mm. Vigo, Lee Sin, anything. Mm. Tell me this champion can... A, a, a champion that is beautifully designed. Syndra is a beautifully designed champion. Yeah, it's a champion. good mid-champion. It's a beautiful mid-champion. Mm. With great counterplay, great kit. Play the game for me. Mm. Play the game for me. I want you to actually do this. Play the game with someone who's never played Rumble mid before. Do that. Or Nocturne mid. First time you coming to him in Nocturne mid versus a guy who plays Syndra mid. It'll, it, you, you'll probably find it'll be super easy. That's it. And that is when you've got something terribly wrong. A Crux, a champion that's been in the meta for years and is a beautifully designed champion, cannot even be picked, even in the most niche scenarios. You can't justify it. So my tweet basically talked about that a little bit. And I think, you know, got a lot of attention. A lot of people feel the same way. And 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 I'm at a stage where I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't I don't have a solution. I th I think Zanir in my Discord was talking about maybe nerfing damage. I, I don't I don't know if it's a durability problem or a lifesteal problem or a or buff tanky items or, or or make you know buff seekers and things like that. I don't know. Maybe reduce the cooldowns on things like or make exhaust and barrier more effective or make tier more effective or or, or remove increase the mana because actually what they did i think i think they they d at the very beginning of season 11 i think they did something to the mana cost on a lot of items and like a lot of abilities i can't remember off the top of my head but they removed mana from certain things they rem I, uh, was it they removed mana from sheen didn't they sheen doesn't give you mana anymore does it no so they i know they removed mana from a lot of things but then they made certain abilities more ex cheaper Maybe you could do something like that. You can make all the the abilities a lot cheaper. I don't know. There needs to be some significant changes. Um, and I think this is affecting jungle meta hardcore, which is what you're probably finding out now the hard way. So like, what is your take on this whole thing? Like, I mean, I've said it from a mid perspective. How are you traversing this chaos from a, from a jungle perspective? Well, melee mid is actually pretty easy to gank. Uh, um... Yeah, I mean, uh, Gwen's actually becoming my permaban. Um, it, the champion is, is just so strong, man. It's unbelievable. I don't have much... I, I don't see... I don't verse it in my lane oh, personally really? much. But, um, so what's what's so strong about Gwen? Oh, it's just... It scales so well. Yeah. It's tanky. It does so much damage. Of, it's a sustain. Damage. And it just counters like so many like... It counters melee, a lot of melee. Yeah, just melee, melee yeah. yeah. So you just ban and that because you play like obviously champs like what are you playing when Elise? Well, no, it's like yeah, I mean even Elise into like when she's still really tanky and she can dodge, you, she can block your cocoons. You can't even really cocoon it and stuff. Right. And you guess you're sort of melee when you go into spider mm. form and stuff, Rexa and stuff like that. I mean like damage sort of solves a problem. Like you can definitely she's pretty shitty early game. Squishy, you do a lot, yeah. you know. Um. Yeah, I guess. I mean, what's my problem? I don't really have a problem. I guess. So what's the meta in your eyes? Because Will Will was talking, saying how he thinks that like Nidalee is just like garbage, but I don't know if he's exaggerating. Uh, yeah. What's the problem with Nidalee? Nidalee, like you need CC. Do those mid champs you talk about they have CC, don't they? they Some do. of them. Yeah. So like look, reliable I, CC and stuff. And but, from from a mid perspective, it seems like if your jungler can't gank. And can't two v two, um, you just it just feels weaker. Well, Zin, I love Zin Zinzao. Zin getting getting into the. I love Zinzao on yeah. my team. I think it okay. feels awesome. Yeah. I think Kindred is still great. Yeah, personally. Yeah, because um, it can it can do a lot of things in the early yeah. game. I think um, Lee Sin is still good. Lee I think Elise is, is good. Flicks. Yeah. I think Rumble Jungle is Diana Jungle Rumble Jungle. Things yeah, still. those things. Yeah, they're still good. Um, so it's very it's just more like a high pressure jungle meta then right something I mean, that can skirmish high pressure I see a lot of cane though but I can't tell if that's an O's thing or not yeah that's I feel more like of an O's thing, thing. Yeah. I think we're just behind the meta <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. I, so I don't really, I don't really understand the jungle meta. Uh, I to be honest, I actually don't either. I right. don't. So I, I'm gonna... sort of just sticking to my pool. Right. Which like right now is like Udia Hecarim. I'm trying to make work. Damage Hecarim. Hecarim. Is that a bad idea? I don't know, dude. You do you. Maybe it's a pretty bad idea with this down and stuff. Uh, yeah, at least uh, Rek'Sai situational. <laughs> I think I think at least and was it the other one? Xin Zhao. Yeah, I think Xin Zhao and Elise. I'm trying to figure that one out. I don't know if it's. I don't know. It feels weird because you go, you jump in, and like you just die sometimes. Your ult's so good though, isn't it? For it, like peel. Yeah, but I don't know. I can't make it work. I'm struggling. Right. Um. I think maybe I'm not aggressive enough with it. I don't know. And then what else we got? We've got. Um, I think Udi does still work. Yeah, Udi's still fine. Udi's I think Udi still definitely still works. Yeah. Yeah, so what's your pool? So it's essentially Udia, Elise. Udia, Elise, Rek'Sai, Try and Zin Zhao, and... Hecarim. You're making Hecarim work. Oh, well, now you've maybe not think of Hecarim. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if you're like... Maybe you're really yeah, good at no. it. Your chant mastery outweighs yeah, it. Yeah, my chant mastery is good. Because it's kind of like me with Victor. Like, I still play Victor. Occasionally. Like, I think it... In Oris, it can work. I just don't think it would work in higher Hyrule or in Korea or China. We'll see how we go. I'll report back. So before and then before we, we we move on from this, common question we get is like, well, when you review people, what champs do they play in Midland in, Academy? In my Midland Academy. Yeah. What are you um, reviewing? It depends on the rank, but my high elo clients, I, I a lot of Galio, Akali. Okay. Yeah. Zed. Oh god, Akali is so. Yeah, Akali's good. Zed. Uh, see the occasional Casio. Cassius, again, it's just a super situational pick. A um, uh, bit of Talon, Echo, Fizz. I think Talon's good. Um, so Talon, Echo, Fizz, those are none of the champions you met, you talked about in terms of you think. Yeah, no, Talon is good. Okay. Uh, apparently, according to Kevin, my high elo yeah. NA guy, I yeah. don't see it in OS, but yeah. apparently it is good and it makes sense. Yeah. Fizz isn't, it's like average, it's just 50 50 because it loses to all those mid champs. It loses to like all those other mids. But it can, like, because it's kind of chaotic and has mobility, it can thrive better than its major. So it's like, it's like in the middle ground. Um, and Echo, I think, is again just shit because it just it has mobility, but at the same time, it just loses to everything. Yeah. Loses to every melee mid. Galio, Rumble, Akali, Silas. Diego, Lee Sin, <laughs> nothing. You can't pick Echo into anything. It's just good into majors, but no one plays majors. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, that's basically the champs I see the most. And, and I see a lot of Victor still. Because Victor, I think, is like the, it's like the one mage that can be played because you can play it really fast and aggressive. And you can, like, adapt. That's about it. So, I think we're in a, I think the next few weeks we're going to be interesting. Yeah, I would say so. I think Especially gonna the next shift. patches, yeah. There's going to be a huge shift. The next patches for... Yeah, I wonder what it's going to look like in three months from now. Fascinating. Before Worlds. I hope, I hope it, this, it will... There has to be. I mean, I have faith and right that they're going to make some significant changes, but I can't... I don't know what it's going to look like, but there, there is going to be some significant changes. I definitely like the 215 jungle change. The 215? Jungle spawn time. It's extra 15 seconds. It, feel, it, it changes the game a lot. So how does that work again? So how, It used to be two minute spawn times for Pekamps and now they're right. out of 15 seconds. So you have seconds. more time to like gank and do yeah, things. Yeah, you can do... And, and do you, it's like less... More forgiving. Yeah. And if you can get your raptors off early, like the enemy... Like junglers, they can't counter jungle it. It's really good. Like a really common path that I do is red raptors gromp. Even on like... Red raptors... Even on champs that can't do raptors properly. Well, you mean split map? Vertical. No, red raptors, and then Is, go to the my gromp. Oh, you start there. To level three. You start there, buff. No, 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 your buff. Red raptors. Yeah. Gromp. Right, and then you don't do red. Oh, red, you don't do blue. red blue gromp. Yeah, you don't do that. Right. Because you get level three faster. It's the fastest way to get level three yeah. and get your raptors off the map. And then you just gank. Yeah. And then you just. Come and then you back. can't lose your raptors. It's all good. You right. Oh yeah, got you. Because yeah. generally, using raptors is the one thing that like. Yeah. People counter jungle. The 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 counter jungling camps are raptors and gromp. Right. You have to go out of your way to get wolves and crocs. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Krog. Yeah. Raptors is the especially like in the meta right now with a lot of champs that like one shot them. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um. Interesting. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because counter ganking, counter jungling would be harder, wouldn't it? Because if you take your camps, that 
Yeah, they, they, they it takes do. longer to spawn. But then, no, but then it's the opposite. If you counter jungle, it's more impactful in a way sometimes. Like, I, mm. I find going into split map situations is actually more common now in right. a way because you, 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 you know your camps aren't up. It's like, fuck it, dude. You know, who cares about those camps? Right, interesting. Yeah. Because, yeah, that's so that's one thing I found is that my understanding of jungle is off right now. Okay. Like, my timing just feels off in, in like, like first clear is okay. Yeah, it would feel it'd be very off right now. Yeah, but it's now after that, it feels like they're on the map more, mm. and I'm and I'm dying. I'm like getting ganked from angles that I w wouldn't get ganked from before. Mm. Um, so I'm assuming that's because they're staying on the map more, and they're. What would you put that down to? Yeah, they, I mean, you have less. You don't. You're not just sitting there just doing AFK farming. Yeah, because that's what used to happen before. <laughs> yeah. right? They just do full clear after full clear. Yeah, and then you get level six. But now they do more creative paths. Yeah, because again, there's way more creative path in odds are going on. So there's more creative path, and the reason that says, what's the main reason again? Because spawn times are longer. So you can, you don't feel bad. You don't feel like you're bad. Camps, not you're just full gonna, clearing. That's right. Because right. you because by the time you finish a full clear, your camps are spawning again, ready to go. Right. So now you can kind of take your time, and 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 you don't feel as though they're going to be able to count like. If you stay on the map too long, they could take them before you would come back, right? But now that doesn't... That's right. That's not a problem. You can have more. Yeah. That 15 seconds allows yeah, you to Yeah, they're still there. Yeah, they're still there. Ah, the camps are still up. Got you. All right, so I think that probably has a big fact. That's a big input on why we're seeing the jungle meta as it is as well. Yeah. I think that's cool. I, I like that. I agree. I, agree. I, I really like that. I think that was a good intuitive fix for like the way the meta was actually shaping up. That's a really good change. Um, Cool. Anything else with solo queue before we move on? By the way, how does this apply to lower elos? Say platinum players, gold players, silver players. Do you think it has an impact? I've I've started to tell people just to ban Silas and just do whatever you were doing, because Silas is kind of like I've noticed that I thought not many people could play it in lower elo, mm. but it's like so easy to execute. I've noticed. Um, so I've said, but just ban that and just do whatever you're doing before. I don't know. I haven't thought that far. Right. Because I, I, I'm really conflicted. I'm trying to figure out myself yeah. right now. Curtis right. did in high elo. And then, then once I figure out, then I can like apply it. To, like I'm fucking. I'm right. I've confused. tried to keep it simple and be like, okay, the only gem you need to really worry about is Silas. Just get rid of Silas and then you can just do you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I sat down with Will and then he's confused. He's confused as well. He has no idea. <laughs> you know. It's a bit of a mess right it's now. It's a bit of a kerfuffle. <laughs> And I hate shifting my champ but I've had to shift my champ Yeah, I think it's just part of the game. You just got to. Yeah. At our elo, yeah. you just got to. All right, moving on. Um, so I had the casual thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah. So there's a casual appreciation thread, and this was based on he was playing with some... Um, he was playing with a, a Jax. Um, he was getting flamed by Twitch chat. It was having like a rough game. Like, was this a solo queue game? Yeah. So this is on, on a. He's playing. He's doing that. He's doing a leasing challenge with the famous other player called Aguran. Hmm. Um, the rank one Kazix. Yeah. Um, so they're trying to yeah race each other playing leasing. They're doing a leasing challenge because he's saying he will help Aguran become a better player by playing leasing and stuff. Right. right? Um, so let me just get up um, the um, the article. So I thought this was really good to sort of highlight a lot of the stuff that we talk about, but also, um, also sort of thinking about there's someone, there's actually a person on the other side. Mm. Okay. So what's the story? What, so what the exactly story happened? is, um, Kajul was streaming, um, his leasing challenge against German law player, Agurin, who mostly recently played for Unicorns of Love, the sexy edition team, which is like the second team. The two junglers are competing to see who can climb the highest in ranked solo queue using only Lee Sin. The in-game chat immediately took a serious turn with Kajul's master tier top laner, um, Jax, a 17-year-old based in the UK, saying, I swear if it's a remake, I'm uninstalling, jumping out of my window and uninstalling this game. I'm done with life. Mm. Okay, that's what he typed. Mm. And Kajul and some other members of the team began to ask the player what caused this and tried to lift his spirits. To be told by the player that his parents are getting a divorce and selling their house, meaning he will also have to move school. He also said he lost 400 LP in three days. Mm. This is sort of like the Tyler One thing in a way as well. It's like, you know, if you're not in the right mental state, this is what can happen to you, right? right. By spamming the game, it doesn't help you at all, right? I mean, this guy has some serious real life issues, yeah. you know? Casual responded by saying, let's win this game then and much love and regularly complimented him throughout the game. Uh, the guy, his name's Al Farouk ended up going 7-3-4 and Kajul went 10-2-8 and they won after the enemy team surrendered. Kajul, and then they started chatting after the match and Kajul sent him a friend request 
And then Cage will said, you know, everything's going to be all good. I know it sucks right now. It must be hard. He's trying to be like, you know, reassuring to him. He said, stay strong, man. There's a lot of life ahead of you with or without league. Much love, dude. You have a great life on. Uh, and then um, and then the guys expressed his gratitude and appreciation. Um, and he said he didn't even know he was casual. Mad respect. And he said, oh, it made me kind of cry. Cage responded, you're going to make me cry now. So basically what happened was... Um, then he told him that he was playing on a PC with 40, sorry, a laptop with like um, 40 FPS and his PC broke. And then Cage Rule said he, he's going to go and offer to buy him a new PC, right? Um, so I thought that was awesome. Mm. Um, sort of, as we sort of, sort of talked about it in terms of one of our episodes, early episodes. We talked about stereotypes, I think it was. And yeah, it's like, you know, there's people on the other, like, you know, you know, you know, this is why the way that I view, you know, say like someone in has a really bad game. Okay. They're, they're just on that, like part of their solo queue journey or like that part of the day, you know, like, and then there's another player that that play, same player will play really well in some other game, but you always remember the book of the game they play bad, right? So it's like, then you label them a bad player, right? So yeah, it's just like, remember like people have like bad and you don't know people's life situation and stuff like that, you know, and, and obviously Cage will help them out here. It always reminds me of Patrick, you know, that, that little sentence Patrick said about how intelligence varies time. Yeah. Throughout the throughout day. The day. Yeah. I, I really think that's interesting. And this is just in terms of his just pure life circumstance, right? Like he's just in a shit place right now. So, you know, he's going to, league's just going to put him in worse, you know, especially the, the environment that a league game I mean, so you feel can look, express. You get a vibe from Cajal that he's a really genuine person. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Like, I get a really good vibe from him. Yeah. And I think he's such an important... I think he's such a good role model. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think he's a very good role model to have in the league community. And I'm so <laughs> glad that we're seeing someone like that at the at the top. Yeah. And then, uh, then I was thinking as well, it's like, okay, could you relate this to, like, the players in your same rank? Mm. Because the thing about this is that Cajul is... He, he's not stressed worried. he can like help because he's helped himself he can help others in these games because he's just smurfing right he's a, I think that was a Diamond 2 game but he's playing like Master yeah. MMR like he's not worried too much about so it's like it, like let's say would Cage will do that if he was in the high elo right interesting no right if he was playing his elo right so because I'm trying to think like how this is relatable because because it's easy, to, it's easy it's for easy. us to say, like, be more empathic, be more empathic. And, and then kind of <laughs> remember there's a human. It's easy to say that when he's not calling, you're not getting, when you it's not like hard games and getting abused yourself. Yeah. You know, he's just like, yeah. he knows he's much level, high level of play. So I'm like trying to think, it's like, that's a great demonstration of great behavior, but it's like, yeah. It's a very, it's a very perfect scenario, isn't it? It is. It's really relaxing. Like he, he can go go out of his way to do that because there's no stress. He's just playing a challenge, a fun thing, stream. Yeah, he's in the right mindset. And he's also sort of got the like the way that I view it is, you know, those like YouTube videos that mm. like people start a memeing where it's like help out homeless guy, like give him money to get like the yeah, intention. Yeah, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, like okay. I, 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 I don't, I don't want to say he's doing it for like. I, he of, like there is an element this is great PR mm. right I don't mm. th- exactly think that was right. the intention because I, I watched the interaction it was very genuine yeah but again it's like he's in that position uh, that he can do that right I don't think it matters though I, I don't think it matters because I think he's done it and it's, it's a great message regardless and whether or not it was for PR it doesn't matter whether yeah. it, well, it's a good message and I think regardless of whether or not he would do that in his own high elo games I don't think it really matters because he did it and I think the, the the fact that he's done it—it's definitely in the right. It's better than we see. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's like who cares? Like, nip, I, I don't really want to nitpick him. If he does it once and he he does it because he's smurfing and he's in a great spot mentally, go, you know, good on him. Mm. I, I think that you, but you, I think you raise an interesting point that it's very easy for him to do that when he's got all that confidence. He's smurfing. He's you know he's just got all his viewers. He's chilling. He's relaxing. He's having a great time. But when you're in the shit. And you're on that loss streak. Or it's you're, very difficult and to you're do in, that. And you're really trying to hardcore win yeah. this game. And some guy's just like saying this stuff. It's very it's very hard to say that. Like, I, you know, you've, <laughs> we've probably all seen things similar to that sentence though. Like we've, we've seen people say things like that. Where they will say, um, you know, if X happens, I'm going to 
things that put themselves down, mm. like I'm going to kill myself or whatever mm. it is. If, you know, if we lose this game and, and look, I think a better way to say this, man, is like, I'm going to keep it real. Like I'm not, I struggle with empathy in my own solo queue games mm. a lot. Mm. That's what I'm, that's what, that's what I'm, tr- I'm trying to say. I, I struggle hardcore. Yeah. Like if I'm in that, because recently, and I'm going to share this with my Midland Academy two-week challenge, but recently I've been in developing that taking souls mentality and um, I've had my own pre-game ritual. I have a series of videos and like I get into like a mindset kind of to raise my intensity. And when I'm in that mentality, empathy just isn't there. My goal is to win the game. That's right. And and it's kind of like that that Michael Jordan thing, like give me the ball and get the fuck out the way type thing. I will do whatever it takes to win the game. I don't have mental energy to be empathetic. I just don't. Like it's just if someone says like if that happened to me, you know what would happen? I would mute. <laughs> I did say it. It mm. sounds awful, but mm. I would genuinely mm. just mute. Mm. I think that's reasonable. Cuz I'm focused on winning this game. I can't I can't babysit this guy. I got to do what I got to do. And that guy dies, I'll make a mental note. He's out of the game. Trade sides, leave him. Let yeah. him let him go zero six. I'm yeah. just gonna go bot side yeah, and I'll win right. the game. Yeah. Sounds awful, but that's just what I would do. Mm. But maybe this is a sign that maybe we do need Nathan need to go to that next level. What do you think? What sends a more powerful message, Nathan? Being a super high elo jungler coach like you who's, you know, quote unquote boomer didn't even play the game for like two years, whatever, three years, come back, boom, top 10, or the dude that's like somewhat high elo kind of challenger, lowest challenger, but like is goes above and beyond to like be a role model. What's, what's a stronger message? That's what you got to ask yourself. Yeah. I would say the latter. I would say the second one. Right. To be the role model. Yeah. Rather than the top 10. Well, well my idea is like, why not both? Why not right? both? Right. That's what I'm trying to work on. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we do need to hold ourselves to a higher standard, Nathan, rather than just muting all and, and like, ignoring the people. Like, develop. you mean, like, develop relationships with the people? Because we see the same players all the time. Yeah. Because my default response is, like, I don't want to associate, mm. in a way, mm. with people. Mm. Like, as soon as people start talking in chat, I mute all. Like, I dissociate myself from the, the social part of the game. Yeah. You think that's wrong? Is this wrong? <laughs> you, do you do the same? Yeah, because I don't, I'd never you type don't in chat. I don't talk in like, chat. You're kind of like a robot. Like I'm a robot. AI. Yeah, an AI. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I, are we doing it wrong? Uh, maybe, dude. Maybe, maybe we are. Maybe we are. I mean, you know, we, we've sort of about, we've sort of talked a little bit about... We're just doing, maybe we're just a, copying out, Nathan. A lack, cop out. a lack of respect for O's. Yeah. And O's professional players. Yeah. But then, um, you know, then I look at this. I'm like, remember, um, hate doesn't come from uh, above, right? And only sort of like becomes from below. From below, yeah. You know, so Cage was in that position. But it's like, do we feel like we're, you know, we're the below one, like disrespecting Osolo Q players? Like we're from below? I'll be honest. I don't feel like that when I play O Solo Q at the moment, dude. Yeah. Like there are genuinely a handful of very good mid laners that I verse. Yeah. That even no, I some agree. of that not some even very pro. good junglers as well. But I that's not my mentality when I'm playing. Mm. I respect I respect the people at my rank. But I don't respect them as competitors in or like just like people. If that makes sense. Okay. You're going to love it on this one, Curtis. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm going to expose myself. I don't yeah, give a shit. Because yeah. you know? again, I, I don't want to be... I'm going to say the awkward, uncomfortable... Yeah. That's what this podcast is yeah, about. Yeah, I'm going to have the uncomfortable conversation. People will be cringing watching this, Curtis. You're, you're an asshole. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not going to... I'm not I'm not perfect. Like that guy that... Yeah. What was his name? Texter or whatever. Jexter. Jexter. Like, I'm not perfect. I'm not an angel. I'm not some guy that has 100% empathy. I'm gifting people's computers left, right, and center <laughs> while getting top rank one. And <laughs> so I'm not doing that. Yeah. You know? It's so like Oprah's like, you get a guy, you get a Ellen guy. and shit, yeah. <laughs> I don't... Uh, that's not me. I mean, yeah. maybe one day. I'm not that that level yet. Yeah. Um, I'm still trying to deal with my own... My I'm trying to get my own shit together, man. But... Um, 
yeah, let's analyze our psychology then. Let's analyze our psychology when we're heading into solo queue. Scary stuff, Curtis. I mean, for me, it's like everyone just thinks I'm the worst player on the server. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm trying to like prove. So you're on the defense. Yeah, I'm on the defense. Because <laughs> I get caught every game. Like I, 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 I Really? Yeah. Isn't what, that bad? Yeah, it's really bad. Oh my God. Yeah. So you've got this reputation that everyone... Yeah. I don't see it when or you're I'm like games. a coin flip player. Sometimes people call me a coin flip player, which is sort of true. Yeah. Because so if I have a bad early game, I'm more inclined to play worse. So do you think that's affected your, your, your own self... Like your image, like the way you view yourself as a player. I mean, I try and not let to. I mean, I, I mean, again, I just go back to my my solid foundations, focus on the process, the blocks, and all that sort of stuff, right? Oh, sure, you're doing this on hard mode, man. That's yeah, hard. it is. It is hard. I, what I've actually doing, I've started. I, I, what I want to do ideally is show because you know people complain like they struggle to deal with the solo queue stuff. I want to show what's, what's said to me. Like so don't then, mute. Yeah, don't yeah. mute. Yeah, because I don't mute. Right? I, yeah. I read everything. Right. You know, so people, but people think I mute, but I don't. Right. Because right. I just sit there. To sort of, I mean, that's what I've always done, right? Yeah, you've always done that. Um, just sort of show you just the sort of stuff. Like, it gets really personal. With right. It, you know? Fascinating. So, but, you know, it doesn't really, because, again, I'm trying to, like, trying to f- focus on the game and go, how Because for some reason, I feel like I need the chat in a way sometimes. Because, like, I want to see, like, what's going on. But, again, that might just be a copy-out. But um, Do you think you would perform better if you didn't have chat? I don't know. That's hard to say. I wouldn't say much better. I think it's hard to say. But, um, but yeah, so... Um, yeah, so I feel like that I'm just, I'm, I can't even get to that whole empathy thing because I'm just on the defense. I'm just trying to prove, yeah. you know, that I'm not as shit as That's I am. I mean, I how am. can you expect to go help others when you've got to help yourself first? Yeah, that's you right. You always got to put yourself first. That's right. That's what I'm focusing on at the moment. So what is your psychology then heading into the game? Like in terms of the way you view other players and other people? Um, like when you load up into the game and you see this stuff, like when people typing at you, like what do you... What goes through your mind? Oh, well, that's just like another day. I mean, I've seen, it's, it's like another day in, in solo queue. So it's like it's nothing sort of happens. So you don't think about them personally at all? You don't think about what? No. Nothing? No. So there is no thought? No. Okay. But it has to be a feeling though. Is, is there a respect for them? Is there a disrespect for them? Is there a I mean, a I've sort of talked about this or? before. I mean, it's a little bit like I understand where that message is coming from, right. you know? It's like, well, you know, you sort of do have a point. Like, I play pretty shit sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And also, it's like, you know, it's like, well, sometimes, you know, players need to blame other people for why they'll lose and stuff. So, it's like, I can understand where it's coming from. Gotcha. Like, the insecurity and stuff, yeah. you know? So, I'm like, oh, God, it's there, you know? It's like, it's just it. So, you just kind of, you can kind of see where they're coming from. And yeah. you don't really give it too much thought. That's right. Right. Um, But it's, I don't think, yeah, it's definitely not a disrespect, right? Like, you definitely respect the players that you've Yeah, versed. these players are fucking, they destroy me, dude. They're good. Yeah. Yeah, same. I feel, I feel, I feel the same. I mean, I think if I'm playing in a lower elo game, there is a lot of disrespect from me as a player. Mm. And the, but it's not disrespect personally. It's just like you're just at a not there yet. You know, you need time. You're at a different stage of your yeah, journey. Yeah, you're a different stage of the journey. That's the way I view it. So, but the players that are at my level, yeah, I definitely respect that they're good at the game. Although I don't get along with them personally, and I I don't really resonate with the way they view the game or their relationship with the game. I respect them as a player. But yeah, I don't know if this is the right way to articulate it, but it's kind of like, yeah, there, I, I guess there is kind of an inherent disrespect for the pro players specifically because I feel like they don't take responsibility when they should be a role model. Yeah. But then I think I need to change that view because they're not, how are they meant to get to that That's point? right. That doesn't make they, sense. They yeah, can't. I they mean, can't. They, has to, they don't have role models. They don't no. have people pushing them. They don't have... They sh- they're not getting paid enough money to have that responsibility. No, they're not. You know? So yeah. it's just like... They're not professional. But again, not, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't view... Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's, I guess, a switch in my mindset for the O's. They're not professional players. Right. I, I, would, say, I would say overall, for esports in general players, I, I, that's why I, I'm, I sort of come to terms with it. It's like, I even don't view LCS, like a lot of the bottom... Like they're not, they don't have a professional approach to right. the game. That's like, would call them professionals. A professional. Yeah. In general, whether it's a professional X, professional Y, just a professional, what a professional looks I mean, the, like. The, def- the definition of professional is like... You do it for a living. You do it, it, you can get, you get paid for it, right? But that's not the way that I view professional. Right, okay. Yeah. So different definition. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so I think, look, I probably have a lot to work on in terms of like the way I view pro players. Um. Yeah, I, I, I kind of resonate though, Nathan, with the way you say it. it's like, I understand where they're coming from, but it's not really out of empathy. I wouldn't say it's empathic. It's kind of just like, 
it just is what it is type thing. I don't know if that's empathy, but it's just like, like I kind of understand. I don't want to say it's coming from a good place because the way I view empathy in my mind, and this is probably a, a scuff definition, <laughs> right? But like empathy is like you yeah. kind of genuinely care yeah. about them and you and you understand why they're making that decision. Mm. So I have, I understand why they, they would say something like that. But then but you, I just don't get, care it's like you didn't give a shit. It's like, well, I know why. It's like, fucking get your shit together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not. I would, it's hard to say I'm empathic. Like, I don't really view it that I'm being empathic. Like, I understand why they're saying that stuff. And I understand why they're, you know, they're, and they're, a lot of them probably are using League as an escape. And this is their only form of confidence and, and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I, look, you know what? What this entire conversation has brought to the surface for me is that... I, as an interesting thought experiment, what would it be like to develop, have that sort of casual like mentality? Even mm. though I don't think he, you're right. I don't think he would have that in his own. Yeah. When he was playing, being if trying like, to get very good at the game, he was like top three hundred on EU or something like that. Yeah, he, I don't think he would actually have that. But yeah. but you know he might. I don't know. Um, what would it be like to develop that? What would it be like to have that level of em- empathy? Would that make you a better player? You might have less mental baggage and stuff. Yeah. Exactly. And how would what would how would you manifest that empathy? Would it be through typing, like helping them? Would it be through adding them after the game and like checking in with them and building that relationship? What would it be? You know what's and again, uh, exploring this a little deeper. If you built relationships with all these players, so you added them after the game, you went above and beyond, mm. and you actually tried to understand them. Say, how could I? What what did you need me to do this game? Um, what do you think about this? You actually got into the review with them in a way. Yeah. That'll be great. That's Ima- actually fun. Imagine what would happen over time. Yeah. Everyone would play better on yeah. your team, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, they would. Because you know that they're trying, they're going to review after and stuff like that. Because well, they know you're not judging them. Yeah. Because they're actually going to play better because you're not judging them. And they probably want to try and prove to you that they're good in a way. Yeah. But from a healthy standpoint. Mm. And we could do that because we know what we we literally t- play with the same players yeah, every single could. game. You could probably go above and beyond and and have every challenger player added and talk to them and develop a relationship with them if you put in the time. Yeah, you could. Even every grandmaster player. All right, maybe this is an maybe approach. this is an interesting thought yeah. experiment. Maybe we should try have a crack. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be like. I'd be down to do this for a week <laughs> and report back next BBC. <laughs> sure, yeah. I'd be down to do this starting today. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You, either they don't accept. Yeah. And it's fine. You, you tried. But the people that do accept, you kind of... Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying you're probably gonna not going to add everyone. You're probably going to add the one person that... You feel like you could review with or something Yeah, like or like they, 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 they had a rough game and, you know, mm. they were upset. You know, you could probably like help them out. Maybe this is what it takes, Nathan, to be like the role models of our community. Yeah. Because we're not really the role models of OS. No, we're not. We're more international. Like no one in OS, I mean, certain people do, but like there's a lot of people that kind of just don't even know no. what we, the message that we're trying to spread no. at all. No, they don't. Yeah. We sort of disconnect ourselves. We have, we have disconnected ourselves. What an interesting little experiment. What an interesting way the conversation Yeah. Went. <laughs> all right. I mean, look, it's going to be uncomfortable. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It's going to make me go out of my comfort zone. Hardcore. I think even more so for you because you've never taught. You never taught. <laughs> yeah. People are like, what the fuck? Nathan, <laughs> Nathan didn't have me muted that game. I mean, I literally have. Some guy, my... I mentioned some guy abusing you the entire game. You add him after. Yeah. You say like, what could, you know, you start like having a chat with him. Yeah, that would be good. I would actually, I, I could actually learn from them as well because I need to learn a little bit about more about lane stuff. Yeah. And matchups and stuff. Yeah. And I'd love to also talk about my approach as well to certain games and stuff. Right. Because sometimes I'm like too theoretical, but I feel like it's, it is actually sort of the right way to like play. Like it's like, well, it's not necessary to take that fight in the first place. It's like, you know. Right. All that sort of stuff. Fuck, man. This is gonna I mean, I, I have like 45 friend requests sitting there on my main account. From high elo players. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. From like, I wouldn't say like the high elo players, but like some of the master tier right, players or right. like the low grandmaster players right. that I popped into. No high elo players add me. Yeah. I don't know why. Because I think they know you won't accept maybe. Right. Yeah. Because I don't accept anyone. Yeah. Maybe I should start adding people. They'll be like, what but the hell? But they would accept you. Yeah. They would accept me. Yeah. 100%. You're famous, dude. You're but 100k subscribers. This is going to be interesting. Yeah. 
Let's do it for a week. Let's see what happens. Mm. I'm down to do it for a week. I am as well. Give it a crack. Yeah. Done. Woo. All right, should we move into should we move into the questions? We've, right. we've been going pretty long. Okay. We had a lot of some other topics. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. All right. We'll be back for Nathan's mailbag. Song. All right, so our first one's not a question; it's a it's a letter. We sometimes read a out letter. these letters, you know, a thank you letter. All right, we was like reading these to like boost our ego. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this guy is from. It's good to see other people's stories, how they've used our podcast to help better their lives, so then people can you know also maybe think about you know the ways how it's, it's helped. And I sort of just want to know as well, and I think it's helpful to share. Um, this is from this guy called Lord Incursio. Incursio? It's not Incursio. Oh. It's not the Incursio from Hobbes. Maybe he's like an Incursio fan or something like that. Hello, Coach Curtis and Nathan Watt. I hope everyone is going well for both of you, both in real life and in your guys' rank journey. I talked a lot about that today. I'm 24 years old and I'm a mid laner. I've been listening to your guys' content since it first started. However, nothing really clicked with me until I listened to episode 45 and 46. I actually can't remember what those were about. Do you remember? Is that the solo queue contract? Oh, maybe it was. Let me check now. Both of them are related a lot in real life. In league at the time, I was silver three trying to reach gold, but in real life, I was slowly destroying myself by doing a lot of snuff. Snuff is like a, it's like a thing that you, um, it's like a flavored tobacco, I think. Got it. By the way, 40, 45 was reflecting on our past. That was the thing about dopa, elo inflation. The 46 was killing the boy. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Due to the stress from work and family issues and feeling like I was going nowhere in ranked in real life. Um, I say that was interesting because the 46, the Killing the Boy episode, that was a controversial episode. It was. Um, after listening to the podcast each time, I just put myself in deep thought for at least 20 minutes. I would ask myself, what are the things that are preventing me from getting where I want to be? Excellent question. Amazing. A high quality question. The first thing that came to mind was snuff. So I decided to quit on May 2nd in 2021 to quit snuff for good. After going through withdrawal for a week, I felt like I was free to go wherever I want and be who I want to be. My gameplay has improved dramatically the first week. I made it from silver three to silver one, doing only two or three blocks of three a day after a month. I finally made it to gold. Being disciplined in a game like League also helped me as a musician and in real life to keep focus on a goal and stay disciplined with it. I have been going to the gym three to five days a week to make myself stronger, both physically and mentally. Whenever I did a review on any of my games, I all, all I looked at was how I died and what led up to my own demise. As you guys always say, get into the details. Uh, BBC shirt coming soon to a store near you. Um, I haven't been as stressed if, or if at all, since I've been doing better for myself and for myself, broken my concept and is an amazing channel to help people in both league and real life. Keep up the good work and keep helping people like me who struggle in both areas. My next goal is to get platinum before the end of the season. If not, then high gold. I hope everyone is doing well, both in life and league of legends. Solo queue. Have a fantastic day and everyone in the community. Wow. What a, what a, uh, wholesome I love it. Letter. Thank you, uh, Lord, Lord, Lord and Curse. I uh, really appreciate that. And I'm so happy to hear that. That's that's some crazy shit, man. Absolutely. That's, li- that's, some, that's, that's seriously life-changing. I don't know how addictive snuff is, but like, that's great. I mean, I'm assuming it's stuff. similar to... I, I don't know what it... I, I knew one person who did it. Think, I think it's like flavored tobacco. So I'm assuming it's like smoking, maybe? Got it. I'm not 100% sure though. But yeah, that's crazy, dude. Props to you. Keep it up, man. Don't get complacent though. Yeah, you can't get complacent. Can't get That's complacent. Right. It can easily just come back. Boom. Yeah. One day you get complacent, you're you back re- in the shit. Relapse. All right. Um, our next question here is from. Um, this is more of like a again a sort of a letter. What I've learned reviewing in silver. So we've talked a lot about yep. this in our podcast. Hi guys, I saw your episode today where you recommend not to review in silver. Um, I find reviewing helpful and have climbed from silver four to silver two. This is my first season playing mid lane. I don't spend ages reviewing, nor do I every game, but I do find that helpful. I play Echo and Zed unless both are banned. I play Brand when supporting. 
Uh, I have experience with brand support from previous seasons, but have never played Echo or Zed before this season. Here's what I've learned. Skill shots go where the mouse is when the button is pressed, not when the cast ends. Figuring this out was pretty massive. Do we understand that, Curtis? Skill shots go where the mouse is when the button is pressed, not when the cast ends. Uh, is that like a channel on a something? channel? Like what? What's the, what's a channel? Playing I Echo. don't know. Echo and Z. Maybe the W? Don't know. I'm not sure about that one. But it must be, again, it must be relevant to him if he's made it. Put it uh, think ahead about what I want to do and move my mouse in, in anticipation. So two thought of mouse things, which is which is which is important, I think. Miscellaneous skirmishing stuff, why they got to level two before me. Trading patterns and matchups. I didn't know what most mid champions did prior to this season. Last hit in better. Learning I need to keep my vision on the enemy instead of keeping vision on the minions or myself. I think that's camera control. I'm starting to learn I should rotate my vision instead of fixing it in one place. But in general, keeping my eye eyeballs on the enemy helps with trading. By vision, I mean literally where are my eyes looking at. Micro, I need to practice like certain wall jumps or combos. Bind a key that not only attacks champions and press when it going on them. I realized this after I um, E2 on an, a tower as Echo when I was trying to hit a champion. After trading, run directly away from opponents. Running at an angle allows them to close on me and trade back. Um, don't stand next to walls if I'm trying to dodge skill shots. CSM patterns, getting a feel for minion AI. Who will they focus and what? Uh, and after the current minion dies, when will they move? So that's from Jarrah. That's all the things he learned from reviewing right, his so games. It's like a lot of little specific things. And what's interesting, look, I, I said this in my video. It's okay to review, but don't, just don't, overcomplicated and yeah. it seems like what he's done is he's found things that are that he needed to work on that are very unique to him mm. so maybe he came from a different game um you know wh whatever it is so i think that like again if it works for you it works for you and and this sort of thing might bring certain things to the surface that maybe it would have taken a lot longer so um it seems like he's keeping it relatively simple a lot of these things seem incredibly uh like he hasn't played. He said he's only been playing what the game for a year. Was it mid lane for a year? Um, uh, because the thing is, is um, he said um, he didn't actually say. Did he say that? I thought he said he'd been playing for mid for a year. If I remember, this is my first first season playing mid lane. Yeah, right. So, oh, so but he might have been playing for a long time. Yeah. Before then. Okay. Look, he, he, look. He, it seems like he's identified a lot of weird habits or things that he hadn't maybe assumed. He, maybe he assumed they were normal, but I don't know. So I mean, if it works, it works. I, I think this is an example for for some people. Then maybe mm. they should get into the review a lot more than they would have otherwise tried or done so before. I guess looking at camera control and like that's all the things we preach in terms of getting to gold is more or less a um a a test of camera control and like yeah, uh, like is. a little bit of game knowledge stuff which is sort of what he sort of covered there right? yeah i want to like hit your abilities at the right time and and we thought just playing more would help with that yeah just speaking from experience but again it might not for some people maybe it takes a lot longer maybe you have to get into the details well it is a learning process i guess in the in a way isn't it yeah so does that change your mind at all, reviewing in Silver Curtis? Well, like, uh, look, uh, like I said, I said in my video, it's okay to review, but I said it's okay to review to increase seriousness, um, to more, like, take it more seriously. But, yeah, I've, I didn't recommend this sort of review, but, um, I mean, it's obviously work for him. But I can't tell, though. We can't tell if that was purely because he's been taking it more intense through reviewing. That's right. Or he's being a little actually, bit more intentional, or yeah. is it because of the specific things he's reviewing? That's right. Uh, we can't tell yet. So. Correct. Don't Th know. That's the key dif dif distinction there. Can't tell. All right, this one's coming from... I'm so scared of the battery just dying on this. We've got one bar left on our, on our audio recording. Okay. Um, fixing egos and overconfidence. This is from Calvin. I think we've had a, an email from Calvin before. Okay. Hi, Curtis and Nathan. It's Calvin here again. Looks like it, we he has written in. I'm writing in about a very interesting issue I've found in my younger cousin who is 12 years old. He got uh, banned from Valorant because of his bad performances there. He blames teammates for trolling him. Classic. 
Then he came over to league, but I basically begged him to find something else because he absolutely cannot play league after what I've seen him do in a structurally similar game called Brawl Stars. Long story short, he claims he has everything figured out in a matter of 15 games playing Master Yi bot lane. The big question is, how do I tone down his ego? He enters almost every game, league or not, with an expectation to win. I've seen this in his math class where he unmutes and shouts out the answers in order to show his classmates what a great math student he is. Oh, I must be on Zoom yeah, calls yeah, or like yeah. that because of COVID. Um, okay. Oh, no. Uh, he has no respect for the process it takes to get wins or losses in any game. As a side note, he has a serious gaming addiction and he won't realize a whole day has passed sometimes. If you guys end up taking on this challenging dilemma, just know I'm super grateful for your time. Woo! <laughs> That's... And look, no, no, dude. What? I wouldn't overcomplicate him, man. He's young. He's, he's young really kid. a young kid, fun, immature. You know? Yeah, he's having fun. He's immature. Like, I, I, yeah, that's normal. You know, don't. I mean, that was exactly like me as a kid. Yeah, literally identical. Um, minus the shouting at math things. I, I guess that, you know what, Calvin. Lead by example. Yeah, that's what. That's the that's best, most powerful thing. Develop again. The way I would view it is like it's kind of like you want to influence through a thousand different sentences mm. you know mm -hmm. like you want to slowly chip away at him it's a long-term process you're not going to change him in a week or yeah. a month or three months or six months it's going to yeah. be a year two year process where you're constantly asking high quality questions showing how you got results and leading by example like you, as nathan just said and and then constantly bring it back to the process keep be bugging him and eventually he's going to he's going to get sick of it you know if you keep if you actually get results eventually he's going to get sick of that look what do you do? You keep saying this stuff. What does that mean? You know, I think that you got to don't think that you're going to influence him in the short term is not. No. I think it's a great challenge. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. And, and as someone who sounds like you spend a lot of time with him, you don't know a lot about him and you must be older Calvin. Yeah. Lead by, lead by example. They will pick up on things when you're really young, like a lot like a lot of things, you know? And it's like, you know, you, you don't even have to like say it. It's like, just do it. Just do it, yeah. And be like, you know, let's say if you're like high ELO in like- Let's get into the review. Or yeah, like, like, or like, yeah, what you do is like, this is what I do. This is my process and stuff. And these, and you know, don't, you don't have to say it's like, you should do this. It's like, this is no. what I, you don't actually He'll have to say He'll just do it. That. He'll do it. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. Because you'll be like, well, this gets results. So like, I want to win. If he actually wants to win, then he'll- He'll figure out and start doing so it. So let him way. have his fun part yeah. of the game. He's going to do that for probably, you know, six months. Let him do that. But eventually he'll come to you and he'll see the way you're talking about the game. All right. Um, our lab, we'll do one more call question okay. here. This one's from Tyler. The title of this email is called Adjusting Season Long Goals. Hey, Nathan and Curtis. Thanks so much for all your advice over the last 50 episodes of the podcast. Not only did I finally manage to hit my goal of platinum after being gold since season seven, but I found that your improvement methods have made me better at my job as well. My supervisor has given me feedback that my approach to mistakes and using them to improve for the next time has been excellent. And I think it's almost entirely to do with growth orientated mindset of you both discuss every episode. And we need to start charging for this podcast because we're going to be able to promotions Dude, in real life and stuff. We need to well. cut. We need, where's, we need Where, to cut. Where's every cut? promotion. <laughs> yeah. This is ridiculous. <laughs> All right. My main question is this. Now that I've hit plat, and with that being my goal for this season, what do I do now? I was certainly a, a grind to get there, uh, get here with intense focus over the last three months, but this was the most fun I've had playing league in a long time. How do you keep your drive and focus up after achieving your goal? Do you push for a new one or do you take this downtime you have now to brush up on skills that are lacking? My champ pool mainly consists of Ari, Galio, and Valkos, which feels well-rounded for AP champs, but I want to add Kiana as an AD champion. Is now a good time to do that? Do I just see how far I can go with my main three champ, main three AP champs? I'd love to hear your thoughts and advice, especially regarding the need for an AD champ in my pool as I move towards high ELOs. Thanks again for all you do with the podcast on YouTube. The content and the details are excellent, but more importantly, your mindset is just so therapeutic. I honestly believe my life outside of league has been made better by your approach of learning how to learn. So I just wanted to make sure you both know that your impact goes beyond league itself. Thanks, Tyler. Well, appreciate that, the message, yeah, Tyler. Yeah, that's awesome, Tyler. As always. So now for Tyler's dilemma. This is an awkward one, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I'm just going to speak from Tim. We had uh, Timofar in my 
Discord, he reached his goal of diamond way earlier than he expected. Uh, yeah. And uh, it took him a while, I think, to figure out. Like, he got it, and then he was kind of confused, I think. Off the top of my head, I think what he did is he realized... So, what, what happened on his process to getting to diamond and the way he did it, he realized how much was still on the table, in a way. He's like, wow... I've like started to get a deeper understanding of the game now. I'm starting to understand my matchups. But now I've realized, holy moly, given what got me to Diamond, there you can naturally see how much is still there to learn. So I think that what I would recommend, especially he just got to Plat, right? Mm. Um, he's, don't, I wouldn't even worry about adding a fourth champ. Stick with your three champs. You don't need an 80 champ through Plat, right? Don't worry about that yet. Stick to your three champs. It's a good champ pool, three champs. Stick with it. It's working. It's your identity. Own it. Go through plat. Once you start to plateau, and because plat, platinum is the rank, all about matchups, is mid laner. When I do my coaching, my process through platinum is I generally my main learning objective is we need to get into the details and you need to understand your matchups. If you don't know how to play your waves and the, the, the correct lane pace, how to optimize that matchup, exactly do you need to be isolating the lane, uh, 2v2ing, exactly how you need to play the ways when you need to reset that sort of thing then it's a problem so what you're going to realize in the process of getting better as you climb through pat you're going to like oh shit i'm actually getting exposed here so naturally you're going to realize oh wow there's all these areas that need to be refined and then it becomes a little project it's like oh, here i need to un understand refine my early landing here my mid game on this champ you, it's going to be like a little bit of a project so i wouldn't really view like in terms of goals like for Tim, I, I don't know exactly what Tim's goal was, but it was more just getting better at the game, you know? And and look, that's what worked for him. I don't know what works for you. And I, I don't think we can really set him a goal. It's got to be what what excites him. It's got to be what excites him. Maybe, but, maybe Platinum, that's that's it, maybe. But. Maybe, maybe. But like I think that if you're unsure, play and reach that plateau. And then, again, just get into the details. And the, 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 that process is addictive. Like you said, he had the most fun coming from gold to platinum. It, the same thing will happen again from going from platinum to diamond, mm. just like it did for Tim when he got to diamond, then he had diamond and whatever he is trying to get to. to. It's the same. It's the process becomes addictive because you see what, and that's the same What's thing capable. for us. We, we, yeah. we kind of see what you can be like. There, there's, a, there's like that image of perfect... Like beautiful League of Legends mm. in there. It's like that You're the Northern Star. It's like the compass. You're constantly chasing that. Mm. And because the game is so complex, you, it's it, it's impossible. You can't achieve it. But just getting a little bit, inching a little bit closer towards that is what is beautiful, I think, about the game. Um, but only when you start thinking about the, the concepts behind it, you can you see what is missing in a way you know you won't be able to have this sort of motivation and, and, and if you don't know what's you don't yeah you don't you know don't, if you don't get into or the you may be you know, yeah you may be um overwhelmed mm. by everything you still need to know maybe and you're like well i got to plot like there's another whole deep end like i don't really want to go down yeah. there you know that might be something you're scared of you might have some invisible narratives yeah you will that is like self-sabotaging from the fun you could have interesting so you're saying that he, he, you're saying that he's like he could have behaviors he, that maybe prevent he, him from having. Yeah, fun. maybe he knows how hard it is right. to get the diamond, but we know the hard is fun, the right? Hard is fun, yeah. Because if if if, if league wasn't hard, it wouldn't be it fun. Wouldn't be no fun, one would play, play, right? Yeah. So maybe he's scared of really now trying to get to his next goal because this was so hard. Because like whenever I hear this sort of thing, I generally think that they know the answer. Yeah, I agree. Like, and they're just looking for a gimmick. Yeah. In a way. Like, yeah. I kind of I feel like when he's writing this, he probably th thought to himself when writing it, like, I know what I want, but I just want validation. Yeah. I just want them to tell me that I should go for diamond in a way. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I agree. So I think he kind of knows. I'm assuming he probably knows. He'll do it. And he'll do he'll it. He'll go for it. Because, I mean, he's, if he's stuck with he'll the process, he's got to... Yeah, he'll yeah. have a crack. And, like, whether or not he achieves it this season, it doesn't matter. But it seems like he's now got the bug. Like that that process bug, and once you really see the beauty and, and getting better at the game, it's it you can't stop. It's so fun. Um, so yeah, man, I think you already know. I mean, by the how articulate you are and how self aware I think is his name Tyler. Tyler, yeah. I think I think you know Tyler. I think you know what you got to do. You have a duty, man. You got to you got to commit. Do it for the BBC community. Exactly. Tyler. We want to see you diamond. Okay. Definitely doable. All right. I think that wraps up our podcast here. This was an interesting one. Don't what I expected. We went down a lot of different a lot rabbit of rabbit holes. holes, this one. 
Um, I can't believe what we're going to do next in solo queue. I can't believe we. I can't believe I agreed to this. Yeah, this is ridiculous. This is not like you could. You're changing your whole. Nathan, thing. this is more unlike you than it is more like unlike me. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you are the definition of a, a robot in solo queue. Yeah. You don't talk to anyone. Yeah, I don't. I don't even talk. I type in the chat. You never. But type. Sometimes I do. Sometimes, yeah. We'll see how we go. Anyways, we'll report back <laughs> in the future episodes. It could be just. I might just not be here after this because, like, I don't know, dude. In the I just, fetal position in your yeah, bed. You just I can't just, get out of bed. <laughs> It might be a, a break me down, but all right, guys, we'll see you in episode number, whatever it is uh, 54, of, the 54 of the next episode. See you next week. <laughs>